Hi guys, Andy here with another video in the Tetron game development series. In this video we will add functions to rotate and move the shape. First let's add some enum values for left and right directions of rotation. Now let's add a function called rotate with an input parameter for the direction. I see there is a warning and it says there is an unused argument dir is never used within the function rotate but we shall ignore that warning by clicking here so this directive gets added so that the editor ignores the warning so the rotate function accepts an input value for the direction of rotation so with the match statements we, we match them up if it's null, it will be ignored and just returned. If the direction is left, we go shape rotate left. And we return a value of right, so we can undo the rotation later. Of course, if right is passed in, we go rotate right and return the opposite direction left. Now we will add a move shape function. This has inputs of new pause and direction of rotation with a default value of null. When moving, we first remove the shapes tiles from the GUI grid, then we rotate or not the shapes grid of tile positions, capturing the return value of rotation direction. Now, if it's OK to place the shape in the new position, we set the position property to the new position, or else we undo any previous rotation of the shape. Then we add the shape back into the GUI grid and return the OK value, which may be useful later. Now we can test these functions by adding keyboard input code to our test script. We can capture input events by overriding the underscore input function. We can, we can capture input events by overriding the underscore input function. Before processing any of the events, we want to check if we have a set a reference to M, which is the main scene. So this will also tell us that we've, also, we've already added a shape into the scene so we can move it around so if m let's define a value for the new position initialize it with the existing position and have a variable for the direction which we will initialize with null Now we have a lot of if statements that go if event is action pressed, for the actual button name, then we will do the action associated with the button. So if the action is UI down, like the down arrow on the keyboard, we want to move the shape downwards so we will add the number of columns of, of the grid to the new position, hence moving it the shape onto the next row. If the left button is pressed, i.e. UI left is detected, we move it to the left by one position. And if right is pressed, we move it to the right by one position. If we press up, we want to subtract the number of columns to move to the row above. And for rotation, I'll use the page down and page up buttons. So if it's page down, let's set direction to left. And then if it's page up, set direction to right. And of course, left and right are defined in the main script. So we use the reference m, m.right to get to right. So if there is a new position or the direction is not null, then we will call the move shape function with the new position and direction. So now we can run the scene to do the test. Let's, let's add a shape to the grid. Using the keyboard, we can check that we can move the shape around and rotate it 
Also, we need to check that it's blocked, it's prevented from going past the side walls of the grid and the bottom. But it doesn't matter about the top because we are going to be dropping shapes in from the top. So it appears to work okay. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope to see you again in the next video. If you like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. See you again.